Welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you RStudio and show you the different windows there are and that sort of thing. So here we are in RStudio and you've got several windows open up automatically like environment, files, console, and editor. And so what do they all do? Well, we're not gonna worry about environment right now and we're not gonna worry about this other one which currently is files. Instead, we're going to worry about the console and the editor. So I see the relationship between the editor and the console, much like the relationship between a ship captain and his first mate. So the editor is the ship captain. It shouts orders. Full speed ahead. Damn the torpedoes. And the console is the first mate. The console follows those orders and then reports back to the captain. Do you now? So let's take a look at an example. So here we are in the editor or the captain. I'm going to say two times five. And these are orders that have not been sent yet to the first mate. And so to send them, I can click on run. And down here we have the first mate. And notice what the first mate has done or the console has done. It has repeated back to you your orders. So you said two times five. Now it is saying you asked me to say two times five and then it reports back the result, 10. Now let's give it a order that doesn't make sense. Two times hello. And now I'm going to send that instruction as the captain to my first mate and we'll see what my first mate says. My first mate says, copy that two times hello. And then it says error, object hello, not found. Catch, catch. And so down here in the console, it is going to report back your instructions and then it is going to give you the results of trying to follow those instructions. Now what you could do if you really, really wanted to is you could be right next to your first mate all day, every day and stand by their shoulder and then give them instructions. So for example, I could go five times five and shout it right down there and then I can get the result or I can say five times hello and I would get the results there. This is a very inefficient way. It is much like a ship captain standing next to his first mate and shouting orders into his ear. Instead, it is much wiser for the ship captain to stay here. And so what a ship captain can do is they could write their orders in advance and then send it to their first mate and take a nap if they wanted to. So maybe we could go two times five and then eight times eight and then one plus hello and then make a comment. And then what I could do is I could highlight all of those and then hit run and then I send all my commands and then my first mate will report on everything that it does. But the other cool thing about this is now you can save this. So I just hit Command S or I can show you another way. You could go to File, Save. If you're on a PC, it would be Control S and then also File, Save. And then you could save your folder. I'm just gonna do this as Test. And then you could close R and then, actually I'm gonna do that right now. And then I'm going to open up our studio again. And then look at that, my instructions are still there. So what I would highly recommend you do, is I would start with a new editor and then immediately save that so you could have a record of it. And so by the way, to start a new script, you can go to file, new file, our script, or if you're on a Mac, it's shift command N as your shortcut. And again, I immediately opened it and I am immediately going to save it. Test two. Of course, I actually don't need that because I'm not actually gonna do anything with this, but you get the idea. So now let me talk about something that is very, very, very important, and that is organizing your R scripts. For some reason, students really struggle with keeping their R work organized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of fictitious file structures on my computer so you get an idea of how you might begin to organize your work. And as I show you these, I want you to think about what would work best for you. And then I would strongly recommend that you adapt one of these folder structures and then use that until you start thinking of a better way. So here is my example of a couple things that you might do. So one might be, let's say you're taking this as part of an introductory stats class. So you might have a folder 
for your stats class. And of course, a PC would be the exact same thing, just they call them directories instead of folders. Well, I think they call them the same thing. Um, and then within that, I might have a folder for my assignments and then a folder for my data sets. And in there, I just have an example data set called Avengers. And then you might have a folder for your notes, and then you might separate that out by week. So week one, univariate visuals, week two, bivariate visuals. So this is what your notes might look like if you were taking my class. And then you might have a folder for your R assignments. So in this example, we might do some practice problems in class. And so you'd have week one, univariate visuals, week two, bivariate visuals and then you might have a folder for readings. So notice what I'm doing is I am separating my R scripts out by week. I've seen a lot of students for some reason have one massive R script for the entire semester. Are you nuts? That is very inefficient and probably not a good way to organize it. So I might do a separate file for every class if that's the way you're learning. And so that would be one example. Uh, another example, uh, some of you might, instead of having a separate folder for R and a separate folder for notes, you might combine things into different weeks. So you might have assignments, data, and readings as we had before, but you might have week one univariate, and then you will have your notes, and then your R scripts, and then week two, you would have your notes and your R script as before. And so those are two examples of how you might organize your class notes. Now, let's say you have a project. I just created a fake folder called thesis and you might have different folders within there, one for data. And so we'll talk about this in a little bit. Um, we have the raw file, which let's say my thesis is about people's beliefs about something. I might have the raw file as it comes from Qualtrics and then I have a formatted one and then you might have a literature folder. By the way, this is the literature, or some of the literature from my thesis, which none of you will be doing any sort of research related to that, but that's might what it look, that might be what it might look like. And then you might have a folder for different plots that you produce, and then you would have a folder for your R scripts. Now notice what I have done, is I have, again, I'm trying to simplify my code. So I have one R file, that is dedicated to importing my data. And then I have one R file dedicated to visualizing my data. And then I have one file dedicated to analyzing my data. And I might have another file for functions, which we'll talk about functions later. And so I heavily favor this approach that you are having discrete chunks of R code that are designed to kind of simplify your analysis so you don't have this one massive script. And then you might have uh, a writing folder where you actually have your thesis document. And then you also have an archive that mine is empty right now because I'm just doing this as an example. But every time you make a new version, you might store the archive um, and that sort of thing. So those are just some examples of folder structures. Now it is extremely, extremely important to stay organized when you're using R. Why? Because R is confusing enough on its own. You don't need an additional obstacle in the way of getting you to learn. So again, try to separate it out into small manageable R documents that are easily organized and that sort of thing. Now let me show you one other thing. So I have shown you various different R files like the thesis one where you have one for importing, one for visualizing, and one for data analysis and that sort of thing. Now let me talk about R projects. So just like in here, we have a folder for our intro stats class and a folder for uh, our thesis data or whatever. Um, our studio also adopts this idea of a folder, but they call it an R project. So let me go through and give you an example of an R project and talk about the advantages of using that sort of structure. So here back in our studio, what we're gonna do is we're going to go to file new project and then we're going to click on existing directory. And why is that? Because we've already created the folder uh, that contains our project. If you've already created the folder, then that's what you would do. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go to browse. And then, so for this, I might, for example, do my project folder for my intro stats class. So I'm gonna select the folder where I store my intro stats stuff and then collect open and then might want to click on open in a new session and then create project. 
And then what that is going to do is it is going to create a new instance of our studio. And then notice right here under the files, it already it automatically puts you within that folder that you created. So we have assignments, data, intro stats, notes, R, and readings, and that sort of thing. And so our projects are a great way to keep things organized. So we will learn here in a little bit about importing data. It is so much easier to import data when you have a new project. So just as an example, again, this is a little premature, but I'm gonna show you anyway. So I'm going to create a new editor, or like I said earlier, a new ship captain. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import my data set. So there's multiple ways you could do this, but one way is to say read.csv, and then I'm going to type in the path. So I'm gonna say data, and then forward slash, which tells it go within that folder, and then avengers.csv. And then even though this, like, if you look at this, let's see if I can make that a little bit bigger. Even though the full file path is home, Dropbox, school, fall 2021, research methods, week three, example structures, intro stats, data, even though that's the full path, because I have told our studio that I am within this project, it knows that all my files are relative to that project. And now if I read that in, it will read in my data set and then I can go ahead, D, and then look at my data set. You may not see the value of our project folders now, but I would strongly recommend organizing your folders in one of the ways that I've suggested and embedding that all within an R project folder because it will make your life so much easier in the future. So with that, let's review our learning objectives. Number one, understand the difference between a console and an editor. Again, the console is like the first mate and the editor is like the ship captain. The ship captain sends the orders to the console and the console or the first mate repeats the orders and then gives a response and a report about what happened. And the idea is that we write our code in the editor so that we could save it for later and then send that information to the console. Number two, know the difference between an R project and an R script. So our scripts are what we write our code in. That is the C captain that we were talking about earlier. And we might have multiple R scripts with different orders that we are sending to our first mate. Whereas our project is like a folder that it is a place where we store all of our R scripts to keep things organized. And then finally, understand folder structures. And I have given you the three examples that I showed earlier. And I would again, highly recommend that you adopt one of those folder structures and then use that until you start thinking of a better way that works for you. So with that, peace out.